Once upon a time, Sarah Palin was treated like right-wing royalty by the conservative media, but apparently no longer. She recently uh, announced or sort of speculated about the possibility of running for president in 2016, and some in the right-wing press are not having it. Take a look at this uh, teaser by Bill O'Reilly. O'Reilly here, Sarah Palin, Donald Trump, Chris Christie all may run for president on the Republican side. Wow, talk about a reality show. We'll have the inside story. Plus, Snowmageddon hits New York City. That more, next factor. Ooh, talk about a reality show. No, talk about a cat fight. <laughs> oh, we don't use that enough. Uh, so she is peeved about that. She says that she doesn't listen to the praise or the criticism, which you'll see, but she apparently did see that intro. And so here uh, is her response to Bill O'Reilly's harsh words against her. Conservatives have that strike against us, you know, right off the bat, that being the media, even there on Fox, you know, kind of a, a quasi or assumed conservative outlet. And we have all day listening to the tease of Bill O'Reilly's. He's talking about the guests on his show tonight or the commentary on his show. And that would be, oh, all these uh, GOP contenders thinking about running for president like Donald Trump, Sarah Palin, and he names them off. He says, oh, what a reality show that would be, yuck, yuck. Well, the left doesn't do that, okay? They, they, they take this serious because this is war. And hopefully the media, even the quasi right side of the media, won't be looking at this as some kind of reality show a, a joke uh, because maybe they have Governor. their so they're they're taking care of their fine does anybody understand her I, I, I okay. <laughs> yuck yuck no, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and then the quasi right being what they are and then the left doesn't do that strike and then, against them but it's war right. yeah okay I think that when desperate times require what uh, I've heard desperate measures <laughs> all right no, it requires sexy librarian glasses. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, so but let's put those back on and, mm -hmm. and, and go, go out there. So uh, one thing she said in there that really amused me was, she said the left takes their, all their candidates yeah. seriously. Huh? What are you talking about? No one throws their liberal candidates under a bus like the left does. The mm -hmm. Democrats hate their liberal candidates. Yeah. I mean, They hate their liberal elected presidents. <laughs> they throw them under the bus. Uh, and, and so, I mean, look, uh, you had uh, people trying to run in Kentucky, uh, and uh, they got thrown under a bus, uh, and mm -hmm. they said, "No, no, no, we got to run Allison Lundgren Grimes. She's the official establishment candidate." Uh, and they ma made fun of Ashley Judd and stuff. And when you know, people were running for president back in 2008, Dennis Kucinich, how do you think he was treated? Oh God! Oh come on, Howard man. Dean. Okay, yeah. I mean, look at what they did to Howard Dean, and he was the governor of Vermont. Yeah. He's a perfectly legitimate and for a while yeah. front runner, and they po Democrats pulverized. Even him. Dave Chappelle pulverized. Yeah. So him. please, like, oh, the Democrats don't throw people under a bus. <laughs> yeah. I think the guy most upset about that teaser's got to be Chris Christie. He's like, how did I wind oh, up with yeah, Donald seriously. Trump and Sarah Palin? Yeah. Right. I know, which is which is weird. I think she wouldn't mention his name, which is also weird. It's also weird that she not only was sitting in front of a flag, but apparently she was worried she was blocking too many of the stars, so she put a flag on her outfit too. Yeah, just, and just, a fire. But yeah, well, but by the way, it's it's a hard, it's hardly criticism of her. He's not saying that she's a reality show. He's just saying like, imagine those three in a room together. Like it's like folksy. And by the way, you can't get mad when people talk about you and reality shows when you have hosted two reality shows and your daughter has been on a third. And. And, and John, she might have had all the flags because one of the names of the shows was Amazing America. <laughs> that was the name of a reality show. Okay, the other one was called Sarah yeah, Palin's good. Alaska. Yeah, okay, she, she was also she, on American Chopper for a while. I'm joking. That would be awesome, though. <laughs> no, but John's exactly right. How can you say, oh, golly gee, you know, mm. we've got the quasi white saying it's a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> when I've only been on two and my daughter's been on many more, golly gee. You're quasi right. <laughs> Dude, her show is called Amazing America. Come on. She hunted deer on TV. <laughs> anyway, okay. so, so she is pissed off about that. But she's also pissed off about the, the criticism that she has obviously justifiably gotten because of her ridiculously garbled speech over the weekend. And so she went to um, another place where she's going to face serious hard questions, and that is Sean Hannity's program. Uh, so here is her, she's being asked about whether she had teleprompter problems. 
Yeah, you also got criticized for the speech by a lot of people, even some of the people in the crowd that, that tend to be supporters of yours. Um, and then there was, did, did a teleprompter go down? Did you have trouble with the copy? Was there any moment in the speech where you had any difficulty because people have been so critical? I'm, well, you know, I don't read the praise and I don't read the criticism because I know how you guys or how the media in, in general works. I'm used to I'm not teleprompters you guys. I don't not be part working. Of that group. Remember <laughs> at the GOP uh, acceptance speech back in 08, the teleprompter broke there too. It didn't work and I, I kept on going. So, no, I, I, you know. I don't know. I received a standing ovation uh, throughout and at the end of the speech. So I don't know. I think yeah. a lot of this herd mentality of some reporters um, would uh, uh, that kind of exacerbate some of the uh, criticism. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Uh, I, we have new criticism, by the way. So get ready. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's just. This is important. She's been saying for a long time that uh, at the 2008 uh, convention, when she was giving her acceptance speech as the VP candidate. Uh, which was really well received, that the teleprompter broke and she delivered it anyway. It's just nothing but a lie. It's it, a lie. It's been debunked in the past. People were there. One of the people that were there, by the way, was us. We, we were at the convention, and JR was sitting in a vantage point where he saw Sarah Palin and the teleprompter. JR, was the teleprompter broken? Um, I was there with the camera because I don't. No, I don't operate a camera, so it was very shaky. Um, but I kept looking back and forth because there's the teleprompter right in front of her. Then there's also the teleprompters along a section of the stadium. So I was able to see it, and I was like, "This is awesome." I said, "I was a little." I was like, "Everybody can see what she's going to say before she says." And I kept going back and forth. It never went out. I, I was following the speech. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, "Oh, now she's going to say this." Yeah. I can see yeah. it coming. And it, and it was a fine speech. I mean, one of her actual strengths as a candidate is when you give her something to read, not written on her hand, by the way. When it's on a teleprompter, she can deliver it in a in a snarky way that that angers liberals and fires up conservatives. That's true. But you're not quick thinking. You're not quick witted. Like you can't just speak off the top of your head. You will bungle it every single time. Now, on the issue of the teleprompter, she has criticized President Obama for being on a teleprompter. Endlessly. And she would often read those jokes off a teleprompter. Okay. Now, uh, Sean Hannity has also often criticized uh, the president about the use of the teleprompter. It's funny that in this clip, he's trying to, you know, give her an excuse like, hey, hey, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, I mean, I mean, you were off the prompter, right? You were, I mean, so don't, don't let people yeah. say bad things about you because it's okay if you're off the prompter. Now, I wonder if Sean Hannity was as forgiving <laughs> when President Obama went off a teleprompter. Well, let's find out. All right, so have you ever wondered just how valuable President Barack Obama's teleprompters really are? Well, consider this. If you try stealing them, you're going to be put behind bars for a long, long, long time. Now, believe it or not, I am sympathetic to the anointed one, to the president on this one, because if there's one thing that I have witnessed firsthand over the years, it's that he needs his trusty teleprompters. I think President Obama, I, you know, I think he's got a teleprompter on each side of the bed when he goes to sleep every night, if he doesn't actually put it in the bed. And I think most of, most of, I'm glad I'm amusing you. We have put together some highlights of just how disastrous things get for the president when the words stop scrolling on his prompter. Uh, I think most Americans have figured out that you take away that teleprompter, he's in trouble. Ouch. Now, if you're still not convinced about just how important those teleprompters are to the president, take a look at what happens when his teleprompter malfunctions. Ow, double ouch. Now, if you still have questions about the president's affinity for his prompters, well, take a look at the fear in his eyes when one tragically falls to its death. You see, this is why the penalty for teleprompter theft is so drastic here in Obama's America. He needs it, desperately wants it. <laughs> Bernie, oh that's priceless. God. Come on, that's priceless. Uh, th th this, this was the whole campaign, room. Bernie. He read off a teleprompter. What's priceless is Sean Hannity reading those intros <laughs> off a teleprompter. You're doing it right now. Nobody needs teleprompters. It doesn't than those penetrate. hosts on Fox News. You're reading his. <laughs> you're reading laughter like now. Laugh now, Sean. Ha 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 ha. ha, ha. ha. Uh, and by the way, how bad are his jokes? And evening, oh Sandy God! Diego? And the people at Fox News—they gave him laugh on. Uh, he needs a teleprompter by the bed. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't get like, it. Like if you—if he'd gone further and was like, if he writes in like the dirty talk on the teleprompter, that would be funny. <laughs> like, like, oh, you dirty bitch, you had it yeah. coming. <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be interesting. Or like it breaks and he's like, uh, Michelle, do me good. Like, do that. That's well, kind of funny. And then, and then, what was his? So, oh, 
after they show a clip. Double ouch. <laughs> oh, Jesus, please stop. So then, of course, ironically, he then turns to Sarah Palin in this clip that we showed you earlier, where he says, oh, but Sarah, your prompter broke, right? It's okay, right? Your prompter yeah. broke. Now, speaking of prompters breaking, I wonder what the former Republican president would sound like <laughs> if his prompter wasn't working. Hmm, let's try to find out. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs>